Okay, so this week I sold one of the watches in my collection. In this video, I'm gonna tell you which watch I sold, why I sold it, did I enjoy the experience, and more importantly, do I regret selling it? I'm Andy, and welcome to the English Watch. This channel is about me and my watch collecting journey, an amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now, if you like this video, why not give it a thumbs up and while you're there, why not subscribe? Now, before we get into it, um, quick wristwatch check, which I guess sort of removes uh, one of the potential candidates. Um, I'm wearing my Speedmaster Professional Hesselite. This is the 90, no, this is the 2018 model I have. So I've had it for uh, six years, not had it serviced yet. Uh, still running okay. This has got the 1863 movement, manual wind. And I'm wearing it on this Artem sort of sailcloth strap, uh, which you've seen before. And because it's summer, um, it's not a great time for leather. But these sort of uh, rubbery uh, sailcloths are quite nice. I don't think Speedy suits pure rubber. Um, I think it's a bit bit dressier than that. But um, yeah, sailcloth is I think is a great alternative. Um, and I don't have yet an ideal steel brace. I've got the steel brace here, the big chunky one. I've tried it a few times, and sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Now I have gone on to the um, say Uncle Seiko, well he's not called Uncle Seiko as he's called uh, Uncle Strap site uh, a few times recently and they've got one on there that's very similar to the new um, Speedmaster Professional the 3861 movement that even has uh, quite a nice milled 16mm uh, clasp with the horizontal lines on but the one I'd go for would be the intermediate uh, polished and brushed links and they don't have any in stock at the moment so I'm gonna have to wait. So the watch I have sold uh, and I'm sure there'll be rotten fruit thrown at the screen, um, tears, there'll be um, people running down the streets with banners, uh, burning tires and all sorts of <laughs> complaints. Uh, it was my uh, 1996 uh, Tritium Dial Speedmaster. <laughs> watch that has given me an immense amount of pleasure over the last 12 months. One I've taken numerous times to Red Bar, uh, always gets uh, a, a nice um, reception. You know, paired it with some you know, good straps. Uh, it wore really nicely on its original bracelet uh, and that's part of the reason I bought it. In fact there's a few reasons. So the first one was, I just sold my Submariner just over 12 months ago. Who could believe? Blimey. And I had a bit left over and I thought, I've got an itch to scratch. Uh, yes, I've got a Speedmaster already, but I handled um, someone else's, I call it Neo Vintage. It was an 861 movement. Mine's 1861, so it's the pre rhodium plating so theoretically there's not much difference but for whatever reason the winding action of the 861 is just divine it's loose it's just winds it's 
beautiful. Whereas this one and similar 1861 watches that I've tried and spoken to other people, it's a pain in the ass. It's really difficult. So I'm hoping when I take this one in for a service shortly, and I'll probably go back to the same guy I used for the 861, which was the watch professional, did a great job and much, 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 much cheaper than Omega. Um, hopefully it'll come back and it's a bit easier to wind. See, look at that. Yeah, it's a bit of a chore. Um, anyway. So, yeah, I sold it. Now, I bought the watch uh, a year ago um, from an online retailer for... I think it was 3850 It was box only. There were no papers. Uh, I bought it on condition and for the dial. Uh, there's lots of watches out there. I think if I was going to do it again, I probably would have gone for, um, I think it was the 20th anniversary or something like that, uh, Apollo 11, with a clear case. It still had the Hesselite crystal, but it also had a clear case back. And they weren't much more at the time. I was going through a bit of a funny patch, so I won't bore you with the details. But, <laughs> um, but anyway, this one caught my eye. And 1996 was a good year for me. It was... Um, the year my wife and I got engaged, it was the year we bought our first house. Um, so there was a lot going on in 1996, and I saw it, and the dial looked superb. And when I received the watch, yeah, it was it was lovely. It was exactly what I wanted from that period in terms of the tritium patina that was all in place on the hands and on the indices. It had that lovely sort of manual wind smoothness, even though the movement was as it turned out, dry as a bone. It was still running okay, about you know, plus 11 seconds a day. But, you know, it was slowly um, grinding itself into a, in a slow and painful death. Now, as an occasional wearer, it could have been many, many years before it needed serious intervention. But it's one of those things where, you know, you buy a watch, um, you know, it's a number of years old. It's like a car, really. You buy it on spec, you buy it on good faith, uh, but you don't really know what's under the bonnet. So I took the back off, because relatively simple to do. And although I'm not an expert, I like to think I'm pretty sensible and pretty handy with the tool. Um, and the, the movement itself was in really good nick. Um, it's clean, it was just really dry. So I kept it for a few months, and then towards the end of last year, I thought, right, I've got to send it off to a service. So off it went to the watch professional, it cost me about 250 quid to change the um, the mainspring. That's pretty common. So it wasn't broken, but it's just whilst you're in there, um, just do it. Uh, and it came back, I think it was about six weeks it was out. And it was just divine. I mean, it was keeping superb time. Uh, I mean, the, the, the tolerance for that movement is something like naught to plus 10 or 11 seconds a day anyway. So it's not fantastic, but it was well within that. Um, in fact, this one uh, keeps incredible time, yeah, within five seconds a day. So, um, yeah, the only reason I get it served is so it's nicer to wind. Hopefully that will fix it. So, yeah, so I enjoyed it for a bit longer, took it to another Red Bar event uh, early in the year. Uh, and it's funny because when we were at the Red Bar, we started talking about uh, Dad's watches. And I was going to make this a subject of another video, but I thought, nah, there's got to be an entry point. So, and I was thinking, you know, what is, um, well, my dad never had a watch. He had crappy stuff. Uh, and in the end, he bought an Omega because I had one. So my son's got my dad's watch, but it was never my dad's watch because, Christ, I was in my 30s when he bought that. I have got some of his old, uh, I don't even know what they are, these old quartz things. Um... But I'm thinking, when my sons look back and say, what is Dad's watch? And I'd say, currently, it's probably the Speedy, which I bought for myself um, after my dad died. And we'd been to Kennedy Space Center, and I reacquainted myself with lots of my old space memorabilia. And I thought, there's something has been missing from my life, and it was this. So, really cool. So that was, I'm not, never going to sell that. 
And besides, my son actually likes this one. And then there's the Planet Ocean. My trusty Planet Ocean, which uh, I guess I bought these as a pair. Um, in sort of, you know, as, a, as, a, as an enduring legacy uh, with some money that, that Dad left. So those two, at the moment, for me, my, my kids say, yeah, they're Dad's watches. Now, the Submariner, it was nice. Um, didn't have it very long, had it nearly four years, but <clears throat> again, had it through COVID. Didn't go on any adventures with it, didn't really do anything with it other than photograph it a lot, uh, make a few videos. Um, so, so yeah. But yeah, we were talking to uh, this fella at Red Bar, and he had a Submariner. Um, and he said he didn't wear it very often because he was afraid of it. I think he said he was a, he's a tree surgeon or something. So didn't want to wear it out just in case it got robbed. Didn't want to wear it to work just in case it got damaged. But then you think, well, he's at the point now where he either wears it all the time or um, lo- yeah, moves it on. So he decided, right, I'm going to wear it to work. I'm going to wear it to the office, whatever that is for a tree surgeon, wear it to the shops. And he was doing that. And he said he, he started to really enjoy it because you all of a sudden you remove the precious element of owning an expensive watch. Uh, and once you've done that, you can sort of release your mind and move on to pure ownership and enjoyment, which I've done with this one. I Once you've made a few scratches on the back replacing the straps and you've you know, gouged out these Hesalite crystal a couple of times, which does polish out to some degree, um, it just becomes an item in your in your um, in your wardrobe really which uh, just like if you I don't know snags your coat on a branch or, or whatever it's it's just your your daily patina and I think going back to my other watch the one that I sold that's where the the patina on it wasn't mine and I've, I've had a bit of a thing about vintage watches where there's an, an absolute solid appreciation of them but for me owning wearing and slowly modifying the watch in my own way has more of an appeal than the draw of owning uh, an older piece if that makes sense uh, and that's just personal to me and I'm not saying I won't ever buy another used watch on the contrary um, obviously I bought the the Cartier but it was effectively new when I bought it so it was a mart so yeah so I sold the watch anyway um, now I've I'd already saved a bit of extra money this obviously helps to add to the pot um, <laughs> it, it's uh, in a growing uh, I'm gonna call it discretionary spend pot that may or may not go on a watch. Uh, I've got other uh, things that I want to spend my money on. Uh, It'd be nice to buy another watch, but it's also nice to go back to the old classics, which I have been really enjoying. Now, I sold the watch on Chrono24. Now, this is the second watch I sold on Chrono24. Um, I could have sold it on other platforms. I could have used eBay. I could have used something like Chrono Hunter. Uh, one of the sponsors of uh, some of the videos. Uh, so it's worth shopping around. I could have sold it to a dealer. Now, I didn't want to mess around. Um, eBay is normally the obvious one, but for me, um, the fees are just too much. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting for one of those special deals, you know, 20% fees all weekend. It never landed. When I sold my... Um, Tudor Black Bay GMT, I had discounted fees, so it was dead cheap and dead easy to do. Um, but sadly, uh, that never came back again. So I put it on Chrono 24. It'd been on there for a number of months, um, just a bit more than I bought it for. So it was on for 39, I think, 3950. Uh, because, you know, you, it's got to go for a good market rate. You know, there's a ceiling price to everything. And yes, I may have spent some money on it, but that's that's for me. Uh, and obviously, it helps it to sell um, because 
lots of people that were inquiring were asking about the service history, uh, which is fair enough. But I guess as a point of note, um, if you buy a watch, you know, potentially you've only got to spend a few hundred quid on getting it serviced. So certainly for something like a, an Omega where parts and service are plentiful, so don't worry too much about it. But um, I guess that level of authenticity uh, with the missing documents may have been a factor um, but it was from a, a, a from an authorized well not from an authorized dealer from, but from a you know, proper dealer that had backed up the um, authenticity for me now sadly since the whole omega scandal last year they no longer offer certificates of authenticity hopefully that'll come back now that was one thing i wanted to do uh, but in the end it didn't really matter um just like I bought it, this watch sold on condition, on appearance, the fact it had been serviced, and I sold it for £3,750. Um, we sort of met halfway on, on the price, which uh, I'd had a number of lowball offers, which I'm like, no thanks. Um, but this one, yeah, that's a fair price. Um, you can always hold out for a bit more and then after fees I think I cleared about three and a half thousand pounds so yeah I lost a few quid um, but I got a year's worth of enjoyment I made a few videos out of it um, I got to experience uh, an 861 caliber tritium dial uh, and I appreciated every moment I owned it but ultimately I don't need two speedmasters I only need the one my one I was looking at this watch just on my dresser the other day and it was probably difficult, I'll try and video the right angle, but it, it's got such an interesting case design and when it's on a black strap uh, matching the black dial, the steel case design, really, it's, it's just something about it, it's, I don't know, it's so familiar but so interesting as well. And when you put something like a, a Submariner next to it with its monoblock case yeah it's a submariner but i don't know the speedmaster's got so much character about it in fact i was i was flicking through my moonwatch only book just to check a few facts um because my watch was from 96 and 97 really was the last of the tritium dial the 861 so that's sort of 1997, 1998, they went full super luminova, so no longer patinas. And then they went to the um, 1861 rhodium plated movement. Now you can watch the history of the Speedmaster, which is a video that I did a few years ago, which I'm pretty proud of. Uh, so it's worth looking at that. Uh, that leads up to the current model, the 3861 and sort of chronicles the history of the uh, professional model, not every model, because there's bloody loads of them, isn't there, but the actual Hesselite crystal all the way from you know, the initial early to mid 60s through to um, the early 2020s. So yeah, a long history of this watch. But yeah, Moonwatch only book as well. Um, th there's a link to it in onto my Amazon page. So any Speedmaster fan, would do well to get this book but yeah so anyway sold the watch um, I've now got what I think is a pretty solid collection I've been looking at a few recently uh, which I'll save for another video um, but I don't know if I want to spend large next time because uh, it's difficult to buy everything all in one go but we'll see how it goes when opportunity knocks sometimes you've got to take it um, but otherwise Enjoy your collections, but try and think, if you've got kids, what your kids will say in 20, 30 years time ago when someone says, what was your dad's watch? And have a think about that, because that's the watch that you want to keep hold of and maybe wear more often. Um, yeah, I'll leave you with that thought. I'll be interested in your thoughts, so please leave some in the description below. Um, but otherwise, if you like this, great. Please share it with your friends and why not subscribe? I'm Andy, this has been The English Watch. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.